Today on Yankee Stacking, I am excited to have back Backyard Bullion. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Boy, this is going to be a great video. So let me introduce to you Backyard Bullion. Hey man, how you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Yankee. And yourself? Oh, I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, it's great to finally sit down with you again for another transatlantic fireside chat. It's been a while since our last one. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody out there in YouTube land who watched the first one, enjoyed it, commented, and has been nagging myself to sit down with you and do yet another one of these podcasts. We've got a lot of really fun topics to talk about today, and hopefully there'll be something for everybody. Now, I just want to remind everybody that we are putting this live on both our channels. So if you are subscribed to me, but not Yankee, make sure you head over to his channel and subscribe. And likewise, if you're watching this on Yankee's channel and you're not subscribed to me, head on over to my channel. <laughs> Otherwise, put a thumbs up on this video as we go through. It really does help everything that both of us do here on YouTube. So without further ado, let's crack on with today's topic, which I think the overarching theme should be what does the value of gold and silver mean to you? And we're going to talk a little bit, I guess, about the cultural differences between the UK and the USA, because I do think there's some great differences and some insights to be had from both sides of the pond. I love that topic. I, I think that's fantastic. It, it brings back to uh, me a quote. I remember my dad saying that a lot of people know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lovely quote. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? But that's so true, I think, with mm. um, with gold and silver. Uh, I've said it and I've noticed it on you know, the world just generally. I think quite the large proportion of people in this world don't really truly know what silver and gold really mean or their, even their price. And if you say what spot price is, people don't even know what that phrase is most of the time. That's true. So there's, And it's more prevalent, I would say, here. I think one of the biggest cultural differences that I've observed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do feel like there's more knowledge in the US than there is in the UK, just generally about silver and gold as a investable item, or at least something of value. How do you perceive that? That's interesting. I, I, I can't really speak to, you know, Europe or UK and the mindset of gold and silver. Although I have to admit, when you do that, you're, you're mesmerizing me, man. <laughs> you're throwing me off my gear gear. Well, just, <laughs> if you could focus on that, would be awesome, man. Because that those are gorgeous gold coins. Oh, man. Queen's Beast there we and go. gold. Man, I, where are my I've Queen's got all beast? nine of them out here. I'm sorry. sorry I didn't mean I, to distract you. <laughs> that's okay. I, I got a couple Queen's Beasts too, but they ain't in gold, maybe. <laughs> and I definitely love gold. I think you guys do tend to focus on gold more, no? Yeah, I'd say that's the, that's the big kind of cultural difference for us. I, I think that silver having the taxes that's attracted to it with mm -hmm. VAT and um, various other, uh, it's just, it's more of an industrial metal as we all know in the world, but the British government uh, really does sort of tax that as such. So right. I think gold traditionally has been more of the place for mm -hmm. the serious stacker. And, and, and it, it's weird to say that because <laughs> I mean, gold is expensive. That's, you know, if you want to buy an ounce of gold, that's quite a lot of money. But if you're just a casual coin collector um, who's not really investing, but more enjoying the collection, then right. perhaps silver is a bit more prevalent. But there's this kind of way of thinking that a coin collector is a little bit boring, a little bit closety. <laughs> you know, it's the balding middle aged man bit who dated. goes around. A little dated, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. But in America, I get the sense that coin collecting is actually. It's a cool thing, or it's it's not necessarily mainstream cool, but it's seen as a little bit more of a doable thing that's not so closety, if that makes sense. It is. I mean, when I started, uh, you know, as a kid, it was about coin collecting. My grandfather was all into that. I still have the books of pennies and everything else that I mm. collected with him. And my father kind of got me into stacking in the 80s when we went down and bought some you know, uh, constitutional silver, silver dimes to be specific. And that was sort of my intro to the whole idea of precious metals and, and coin collecting. But again, decades later, coin collecting has really suffered a lot from just, uh, I think, I think the, uh, you know, the video game <laughs> mentality and a lot of other distractions people yeah. people want things fast they they want you know a lot of change and that's a very 
you know, uh, focused type of hobby, similar to like, you know, model, uh, modeling or model rocketry or anything that's like, you know, you're doing something uh, very slow and deliberate. I think it's less popular by far now than it was Is in the it? past. Yeah, coin collecting, yeah. Do you think that has to do with uh, shifting in, obviously there's a shifting culture from sort of yep. the 21st century, um, but I, I also think there's like an atten- almost like an attention span cultural change in the world. I've noticed mm-hmm. it within myself even mm-hmm. that, you know, nowadays if I'm watching, you know, a TV program or a film or something, I can lose interest so quickly. Whereas 20 years ago when I was uh, in my teens and watching, I could binge watch TV for, for weekends, right. you know, literally 48 hours just transfixed to the, the TV for a particular series. True. But now I, I just find I can't do that and my attention waxes and wanes and i think there's definitely a kind of cultural shift in the world away Mm. from the kind of physical side of things and you need everything now instantly we see that we see that in movies now i mean i watch something Mm. with little stacks he's like saying yeah that's not practical dad that's for i'm like wait what (laughs) he means the physical is going out we're going to be seeing virtual actors like like it's going to be commonplace very soon so again that physical the touching is is sometimes you know lacking however when it comes to stacking now i think mm. we definitely in the u.s uh have that maybe in spades over the uk that yes mentality so of stacking i would it'd be interesting to do a kind of percentage of what population stacks if there's any kind of stats mm. out there it'd be so difficult to to do but i do think that that you guys in the u.s there's more mm. ownership of silver generally, whether mm-hmm. it be in modern bullion eagles or even just old silver coins that were coin hunted from circulation. Right. Um, there's definitely more of that than in the UK. I think it's very, very uncommon to find anybody who truly invests in silver or gold. There might be quite a few people who have like a gold ring or mm-hmm. a gold bangle or something. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's very different to this stuff bullion coins i agree with you yeah and in gold has been for me personally has been my focus uh back in 2009 with a yankee cannon that's that's mm. a tube of gold that was really my first step into stacking uh you know bullion gold uh bullion but then silver you know in 2018 was really my focus so uh, silver was a it was a great time to start now with what's been going on I shifted back away, but maybe being more like a European and going with the gold. That's what I'm focusing yeah. on right now. Well, I think for me, it's it's really been an eye opener this mm. 2020. And we talked, I think, quite at length about that in the first video we did together. Right. So I don't really want to recover old ground. But for me, in certainly the last couple of months, it's reinforced that silver is actually it's a it's a valuable asset. And whilst it went down horribly at the start of this, mm-hmm. for whatever reasons they might have been. Right. It has come back up again, and you know the premiums are holding right now. The dealers still are charging quite a lot, and when those will come down, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think your your question about value and price is extremely important because right now mm. we've seen some volatility, some significant volatility in price. Mm. But it's important to remember what value is when you when we talk, you know, in terms of precious metals, silver. Uh, what is the value? I like to look at it as the value compared to what? Compared yes. to gold, compared to things, uh, supplies, goods and services, uh, compared to the markets. There, yes. it's, it's, it's in relationship to other things that I think value really shines when it comes to precious metals. So the value, that's, that's where I really want to take this because that's the mm-hmm. overarching theme, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. value does silver and gold have to individuals? So I want to ask that question directly too. I'll answer it as well after, you, <laughs> after you've done, but you go first. Okay. Um, what does silver and gold mean in terms of value to you? What is it about gold and silver that has value for you? Hmm. Well, I think it's, I can't divorce it from the good old USA. I have to think mm. about it in the context of my country and my history, especially my history. In fact, I, I think it would be important for me to give you hopefully a really short history lesson about silver and gold because bottom line for me and many of the people that I know, it's money. Mm. And the role of silver and gold is so important to us, especially in America. So hopefully you'll, you'll get something from this, but you know, Back in uh, 1775, start of the American Revolutionary War, you know, the battle that 
we had with you guys. That's all right. I, <laughs> I'm okay. not bitter about it in any way. <laughs> Don't mean to trigger you. <laughs> no, but yeah, good. so hey, it's all good, man. Um, the uh, Continental Congress actually began issuing paper money. Mm. I don't know if you know what the, it was called, but it was called... Uh, no, it wasn't a dollar then, was it? It was, it was a continent, continental, continental, yeah, currency. continental currency. Oh. That's what they called okay. it, called the Continentals. And they had all kinds of denominations, like, you know, uh, I think it was uh, one-sixth of a dollar, $80 denominations for this, this currency. It's paper, right? Yeah. Well, during the war, <laughs> that Continental went way down in uh, value. It depreciated huge. In fact... It, they came up with a, a, a term called not worth a continental. Sure. <laughs> that was it. It was just, it was crap. Uh, and of course, there was some con- you know, counterfeiting going on by, uh, by the British. So thanks. Oh, sorry uh, about that. <laughs> that's okay. No problem. I, I'm not bitter now, but I suspect <laughs> that they were quite oh. salty about it back in the day. So Big time. Yeah. So around uh, uh, 1780, the bills were worth like 140th of their faith, uh, face value. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Like a hundred dollar bill worth two and a half bucks today. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is inflation. It was massive. It was, it was just debilitating at that time. So when our founding fathers got together and, uh, they created our sacred, uh, document known as the U S constitution, they put in some really explicit language. In fact, hold on. I think I got handy dandy constitutional book here so awesome. yeah this we love this right <laughs> um we in, don't in have it, something like that here in the uk you know no you don't huh but anyway i, I don't want to i don't want to distract you go on yeah, I, no I, problem. I love history i love this no problem. I, I i'm not going to get into it too detail but it in article one section eight it talked about money and that the congress was going to have the power to coin money very important it said coin money and regulate the value and all that. Uh, and then also, of course, you know, provide for punishment of counterfeiting because, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and then, oh, and then Article 1, Section 10, um, they, they, they said this, this is really important. They said that no state shall, among a bunch of other stuff, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Very important. So, very very good they put it right so, in the constitution yeah so, so it really is it's money. right there right you know and yeah. and and why why did they do that they put that language there very explicitly to absolutely ensure that we would not go back to another fiat currency okay they wanted a monetary system based on gold and silver coinage and that was the official money if you will for the uh, u.s and all the founding fathers talked about this in fact some of them you know, like, uh, 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 what was it, um, uh, James Madison. He was also our fourth president, I think. Um, he talked about it, too, and he said this, and I, I, do, want, I do want to say this quote because this, this is the final thing that I really want to drive home. He said about that clause, the stuff that they put in there, the Continental Congress, they said, uh, he said that the pretext for paper currency, and particularly for making the bills a tender either for public and private debts, was cut off done no more paper currency currency for debts for payment Mm -hmm. i don't think we've been very successful at that uh going forward i think the supreme court's kind of dumped on us over and over again and violated that but right now we have federal reserve notes that's yeah not money it's just flat out currency it's fiat currency and then you know i think in 1971 we said "Uh uh-uh we're not backing our currency by anything but the full faith and credit of the united states yeah that is a big driver for some of us uh u.s uh stackers i mean that's one of the reasons why we like to stack uh silver coinage you know from you know 1964 and prior so i'm just gonna reach into my box oh i love that sound (laughs) That is that is a gorgeous yeah, sound. Yeah, I don't want to desecrate the my uh, American flag here, so just gonna dump all that there. So this this is money. Yeah, this is very important to us, whether, whether it be quarters or half dollars, dimes. This is special, and I just feel that you know that is one of the things that we focus on because of the value that it 
that it represents. Yeah. So again, it's, again, I think it's a, a U.S. focus for a lot of stackers. It's really interesting to sort of hear that because I'll give you I'll give you my answer now. Okay. So my way of thinking, and, and I guess this has all got would be taken with a pinch of salt because I'm um, I'm relatively new to this whole game. I've only been buying silver uh, in terms of an investment for four years, four and a half years now. Mm. But for me, what it represents is wealth mm. and how that wealth can be kept. So it's a similar premise, I guess, that you have this fiat currency, but more and more so. And it's it's this idea of it being precious. So, you know, yes. it's like Gollum in Lord of the Rings, my precious. You know, you really, I do genuinely value this as something precious. Mm. And there, ha there is something about this stuff, whether it be yellow stuff, white stuff, platinum, gold, silver, it mm. has this lure to you, this allure mm. that brings people in. <laughs> and for me, it's grown. And they, maybe it's call it gold fever, but you get this sense that you actually have something that's worth money. Oh, look at that, an Oriental board of Britannia. Yeah. I right. love those. That's, that's, really good. that's the 18. Yeah. Uh, it's my favorite of the three. <laughs> no, no, stop stop distracting me. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to get you back, man. I'm going to put my video on the screen, so I, yours is tiny. Um, so, yeah, look, you know, I personally do very much have similar ways of thinking with mm. yourself in terms of the fiat currencies and devaluations but for me it, it's more about wealth preservation and i view it in that as being the value so i don't necessarily view a lot of like the the eagles here i don't view these as money makers as currency that i could use at some point in the future i um view them as tokens by which i can continue to live the life that i want to live with the wealth that we have and that we want to keep at some point in the future so whether that's even for small purchases like cashing it in to buy you know your groceries or whatever or whether it's um the bigger gold stuff to cash in and help buy a house or a car or whatever it might be mm -hmm. you know for me that that's a saving mechanism which i use it for rather than kind of a monetary currency system and i, I feel that that's a good representation of what most people here in the united kingdom would also say for their gold and silver um i am not shy about you know, potential profit on a piece of gold or silver. If I have a piece of gold or silver, which I think can make some short term profit and I can mm -hmm. re, you know, re roll that money up right. into something else, I will. And I don't feel, uh, I don't feel guilt about that. Um, but Neither I think that's should probably you. <laughs> say again. Neither should you. I mean, no, especially in the um, United States, we love our capitalistic uh, mindset. It is that capitalistic mindset. But at the same time, Yankee, and this is actually a topic for one of my videos in the near future, and I've been mm. mulling over it for a while. I uh, have almost got a little bit of seller's remorse somewhat on a fair mm. amount of silver that's been sold. So for those who are watching who don't know, I make my own silver bars. And I've got some of them here on the table. Not this oh. one. This is a different one. That's to be chopped up and melted one day. You're going to chop if that I, up? If I ever get around to it. It was <laughs> bought specifically as a melt bar because it was so cheap. But wow. uh, it, it is the last thing that would be melted. But anyway, the point is, from everything that I do with the hand poured silver, we're selling on average about eight or nine kilos worth of silver per month when you average it out across the year. Right. And of course you have to buy in the raw material to process it, to send it out. And part of me always goes at the end of a month when you've sent out so much and you think, oh God, maybe I should have kept that. What's happening in the world right now? Do I need, will I need that in the future? Oh, I see. But then I of see. course- Your stacker course, mentality we, kicks in there. Yeah, so yeah. you've got, I've got two heads on at the moment. I've got my <laughs> stacker mentality, which is growing in, in you mm. know, it's growing by going, no, this stuff's really valuable. You mm -hmm. need to keep it. It's, you just got to look at where gold's gone over the last, you know, sort of three, four years, mm -hmm. uh, well, two years, maybe but five years, you know, it was down around the 700 pounds mark. It's doubled in value across five years and yeah i got this for a thousand dollar uh a thousand dollars an ounce yeah so it, it's crazy amazing so, huh you know the stacker in me says you should keep this stuff because in in 10 20 years mm -hmm. time it will be you know worth more but then there's the business-minded part of me which is like well you're trying to run a business here and of right. course so many other companies around the world are trying to run businesses whether they be you know the samsung's apples or whatever it might be that use silver in their products or mm -hmm. you know it, you've got to kind of continue on with life as you can but there is this inner part of me that goes 
this stuff could be skyrocketed of one day mm -hmm. or it could really help mm -hmm. in that kind of eventuality where currencies are not valued anymore so mm. it's interesting that my I, I, what i want to sort of reflect on is that my mentality is changing and my mentality has changed from the start where i bought these well not these ones but i bought some silver coins specifically to hold for maybe a year sell get a bit of profit like any other investment that you might have stocks right. and shares or whatever it might be but that has quickly changed so i so it's a very long-winded. <laughs> no, that's that's but it's excellent. Good, isn't it? we, I love to had, hear that. Yeah, I think we've we've had two very different looks and mentalities on what it means, but ultimately, I feel that we're crossing over on quite a lot of that common theme, which is that mm -hmm. it is real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you it, this stuff is tangible mm -hmm. and touchable, mm -hmm. and numbers on a screen scare the living daylights out of me. <laughs> that's I I think that's fascinating. I mean, I love hearing. The evolution, if you will, this uh, this this change of, of of some, you know, I think I think overall you still have the same mindset towards precious metals, but there's some some nuanced changes there, and I think that's fantastic. I've seen it in other people. Frankly, I, I'm still stacking the Yankee way. I haven't really changed mine a whole lot. I'll ha I have to admit, the last few months has solidified my position in my mindset in terms of. You know the three things that I, I focus on, uh, but it, it's just amazing to see how I think people are coming around to this. I really do. Yeah. I think it's growing. I mean, hey, look Ash. at the demand. Look at the demand on the oh, physical side. It's been remarkable. It's mad. What are you showing? Here, here's now? just a little example. Oh. Um, I think of of what's special about silver and gold <laughs> coinage. So this was a, a gift that was given to me by a customer that I met in London, yeah. um, who is from Egypt and he was in London on business. And I went and met him and uh, handed over some orders that he'd made. And he gave me this as a gift. And mm. it's a 1,370 odd year old coin uh, from the year 717 AD. Oh, wow. And you know, this this is a Se real- you say 17? 1717 sorry oh 717 AD. Seven. so over 1300 <laughs> oh years old and you know this this is wow. my this is the oldest coin i have and we all know that you know the ancients used gold and silver but to, to really it, the coins haven't changed much you know they're round they're coins and they're used as money mm. and they preserve and look this is what it will silver will look like in 1300 years time so you said something yeah. really interesting there you said something interesting that I, I want to jump on just for a second. Yeah. It's it's round. Mm. I And I've commented on this in other videos, but I truly believe there is something in the human mind that looks at round objects as as money. You know, I actually, think it's just ingrained into our psyches and culture, isn't I it? I agree. It, it really is. Nothing against, you know, bars. I think that's great for, especially for larger stacks and people that are really stacking for weight. I did a video on this uh, just yesterday. I dropped about the different ways to stack, and I think that's fine. It's just that when you look at it from a monetary standpoint, I think the roundness of a coinage, a coinage is really just, you know, baked into a lot of our, 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 our viewpoints well, as to what my money is. Well, I'm not uh, I'm not any kind of expert silversmith, but having worked mm. with silver for quite a while now, oh, you're, you're, I can you're... imagine. Wait so this a minute. Is be no, 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 no. I got to stop you now. You, you eh? are an expert. Well, oh, my uh, word. You're amazing. Go on. <laughs> uh, mm, the jury's out on that. Anyway, no. the point is, so I can, I can only imagine that back in the day when they were melting mm. some silver or gold and pouring it and then striking it to make it into a coin, First of all, it's kind of a liquid, and when you pour a liquid out, it wants to, it just wants to make a circle. A circle is, in nature and physics, the simplest and most easy shape for anything to make from a liquid, because of gravity, obviously. And so I can only imagine that that was kind of the easiest thing. But when striking a coin as well, of course, you're flattening it, and everything is going to be pushed outwards evenly and distributed evenly. So if you make a square coin and then you stamp it, you're probably going to end up with something that's not square shaped. So. I don't know. Maybe that's something to do with it. But anyway, that was a side tangent on uh, yeah, that's good. on yeah. the circular nature of coins and why that's, they were. Cool but idea. Um, I don't know. So, it, what I really like an, about this, though, and it, it does sort of make me really think about this whole connection with value, is that you know somebody made this coin, somebody gave it value, and it maintains that value through our own collective human culture. So despite the fact that we have very different ways of looking at it between the US and the UK and 
probably various different countries around the world value different precious metals in different ways. You've only got to look at sort of, you know, the, the Indian cultures around gold and gift giving in China as well. It's very common. And, you know, the one thing that unites us all is that we all still believe, rightly so, that silver and gold are valuable and have wealth built into their intrinsic nature. It's interesting that we as, as humans collectively have all done that on different parts of the globe at different times throughout history with no connections with one another. We've all gravitated to this, these two main metals and made them our money and currency. And that's what, in my mind, solidifies that whilst we're in this 21st century of change and digitalization and connectivity, there is still this underlying thing that unites us. And it's like, like I said, the gold fever, the precious nature of these things. It does. You know, you get hold right. of a big gold coin for the first time and you go, wow, yeah. yes, please. And that will be the same, <laughs> I think, in 200 years time when we're no, young, look, no longer using physical coins and notes and currencies. Well, it's not random either. I mean, there's a reason that silver and gold fulfill that purpose. It's They're rare, but they're not too rare. Like yeah. a palladium or rhodium or something or platinum, Th those are are very rare. And you know, gold and silver, the properties. I won't go through them all, but they really lend itself well to being coinage, to being real money. Yeah. You mentioned value. <laughs> these these uh, metals appreciate in value over long periods of time. Our paper currency, which I don't have a dollar bill, I wish I had one right here. You could see a Federal Reserve note right across mm. the top. They depreciate, and what we're seeing right now is unprecedented deflate uh, or, or, or in, um, in inflation of the currency supply. We are printing yeah. like madmen all over the place. The United okay. States is going bonkers. It's the same here in the UK, right? So actually, that's that's. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about a connected topic to that. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that we should talk about mm -hmm. that sort of a macroeconomics um, and you know discussion that we could talk for another hour at i'm sure but um one of the connections to that is around of course the ability to sell your gold if you need to so we are in these unprecedented times where people very sadly are very hard up in certain cases and they may have lost their jobs altogether or they may be facing the prospect of losing their jobs when government support kind of runs out and the world starts to try to get back to normal uh, how does how do you sort of perceive the gold and silver selling culture in the US? How I know there's obviously some very big cultural differences in sort of physical locations, but generally speaking, mm. with everything that's going on with COVID and, mm. and things like that, have you had have you got any insights for us what it's like over there to be able to sell your gold and silver? Is it easy, hard? It's uh, it's actually quite uh, easy to sell because yeah. a lot of people aren't. <laughs> Um, yeah. I know my local coin shop dealer would be like, bring it, bring it on uh, if you want to sell. In fact, just the other day, I, I, I've i been focusing on gold. I'm a very focused, very deliberate stacker. So when I get on something and I'm trying to create a, uh, a maple musket right now, which is a 25 uh, tube of 25 quarter ounce gold maple leaves, Canadian maple oh, leaves. I just, so I'm I just trying. Want to very, I just want to very quickly interject and say... Okay. Uh, your Yankee cannon and uh, Yankee musket, they are under threat from one day I shall have the backyard <laughs> blunderbuss the blunder of bus. these. The black oh, was, was suggested, do it. I can't remember who suggested it, but somebody in the comment wow. section suggested it. A backyard blunderbuss of these 50 pesos. It's by oh. far and away my favorite gold coin Those stack. are gorgeous, dude. Uh, no, I, oh, yeah, you should definitely do that. But anyways, I, I focus on gold really, especially now due to the premium. Uh, the silver premiums are still crazy. They're coming down a bit, but they're still kind of crazy. But the other day... Yeah. I had someone in the um, uh, Instagram community reach out to me and say, Yankee, I want to sell a couple of uh, my, uh, my tubes. And so I, I met him. Uh, he sold these to me for under spot. Way, way under spot. It was an amazing deal. So I had to, I had to stray from my gold focus and stick, grab these while I can. But yeah. selling something like that is so quick and easy, especially in person. Uh, and then I, he came back and actually said, I, I got some, some more eagles. And, and he even sold me a, a tube of, of uh, generic uh, buffaloes. So, I mean, I had to say yes just because of the price. But selling is, is definitely easy. Um, yeah. It's just not happening. People don't, don't sell it very easily. So okay. they want to hodl it. Yep. They want to hold on for dear life. 
<laughs> so I've I've noticed that it's a difficult one because in the mm. UK we don't have by any stretch what you would deem the local coin shop. Mm. Uh, we have a few of them in various cities, and maybe some of the bigger cities have a few sort of sporadically located, but really there's very very few. And again, it's I think down to that culture of coin collecting being seen as this old man's, right. you know, balding old middle-aged man type thing, and it's just not for everybody. So for us, it's all about it's all about selling online, digitally, and mm -hmm. through forums and social media. Yep, like and I've form. I've noticed yep. an awful lot of metal. I would say proportionally, uh, the UK seem to be selling more of their metal right now than not. And there's a lot of people who are cashing out of silver and cashing into gold but there's also quite a few people who have been cashing out of their gold because they view it as a profit maker from when they bought it maybe two three four five years ago and it's it is tempting you know at the end of the day for example something like this here a five sovereign piece would have been picked up for uh i, mean, I could quite easily pick this up for about 1050 pounds it's worth about 1700 yeah. now so you look at that and you think yeah that's 600 pounds plus profit um which some people sadly need to kind of have right now if they uh, have lost their job or oh, if they you know yeah. financially are required to do so right so I, I do think the kind of culture of you guys in the us generally the stacker mentality mm. being more prevalent you're more of a what's the phrase hold hodl or hold that's right hold on for dear life hod yes hodl, hodl. <laughs> and um here in the uk i think we're a little bit more mm. um open-minded and pragmatic about taking our profit where we can and opportunistic um, yeah i think there's, and there's nothing wrong with that there, no. are, there are people out there who will be quite happy with you know a 600 pound profit mm -hmm. i personally don't like to live with regrets but sometimes mm -hmm. you know you, you let something go and you think ah oh, you know right. i let that go a year ago if i hadn't done i could have made even more money right now it's the but flipper it's the can... flipper stacker mentality or somebody that like like this coin that um i got back in uh, 29 the you know the black flag I i've sold some of these yeah and oh, love, that's fine that but, but what i do with the profits i put them back into gold mostly but i, I again i invest uh that way if you will i don't necessarily yeah. consider this an investment but and there's my uh, my poured round so yeah i mean it's it's definitely uh valuable in that sense some people just love collecting it and it's valuable to them but it's intrinsically valuable like you said Yes, uh, I think that's the uh, the most important thing. Uh, well, actually, I say that there's another really important topic which we we talked about trying to talk a little bit about here, mm -hmm. um, and that's financial responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I do want to see what your thoughts are on some of the cultural differences because um, I think here in the UK we're a lot generally a quite a lot more conservative with our cash, with our money, and Joe Average blogs. Probably won't go out and buy gold and silver. He'll he'll just really focus on what he wants, and then maybe if he's going to make that decision, he'll do it an, an awful lot more. He'll go out and he'll try and find the best place to buy it. Whereas sometimes you get the impression that there's a lot an awful lot of hype that can be driven from the U.S. culture and media around gold and silver, and people then suddenly try and jump in as much as they can because they think it's the best thing to do. Do you, I, I hope I'm not generalizing too much there. No, the U.S., you, we have a perception, and I think it's somewhat warranted as being, um, at least in the generations since the baby boomers, uh, we see, we want, we get. Yeah. And uh, we're not as fiscally responsible as, say, you know, my parents are who, who are in their 80s coming through the Great Depression, being savers, being very conservative fiscally. We've lost a lot of that. In fact, when I was talking to them the other day, they said, we know what it means to be prepared or prep, if you will, to have money for a rainy day, to be able to save for an emergency, to have that kind of reserve. We don't live that way in the U.S. We, yeah. are, we are focused on getting what we want now. In fact, now is a little late. It should have been yesterday. It's it's yeah. it's amazing that mentality. It, not to say that it couldn't shift. You know, I have a, a Gen Zer under my roof right now. I'm honestly wondering what little stacks will be facing and how he will change his mentality. What will what will that generation look at after we've come through this medical and I think economic crisis? So mm. in the United States, I think we've got a lot to learn and I think that lesson will be learned unfortunately I think the I, I think the way it's going to be learned is going to be extremely 
painful in the next uh, a decade. I don't think we get out of this decade uh, unscathed. In no, the I think the, the, the 20s are going to be a, a tough one for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. And um, the the thing that I, I guess kind of irks me quite a lot is that this there does seem to be this. Uh, it's like almost like a conspiracy theory that hmm. um, the gold and silver will be the thing that you need to survive when in my head i still I, and we're, we're quite different on this because i know that you're very much into this financial preparation I'm a and stacker. i'm financially prepared don't get me wrong but i'm right. also not a prepper yes I but there is a there is a very different uh, I'll, culture I'll of you one day prepping. Uh, it's, it's, oh, it's your pet project I, of mine. I, I, you know, I'm coming around to it. I, I'm I've kidding, got a lot I'm more, I am more canned food in the house than we used to, but um, still, we don't have the bunkers and stuff. So there is this kind of culture perception in the US that you guys have, uh, you know, have your bunkers, have your guns, your ammo, all of your gold, I'm not silver, a doomsday dried food. prepper. I don't have a bunker. <laughs> um, but then there's so there's this 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 sort of overarching thing of financial responsibility and mm. for those people who are kind of new to precious metals this year i i do try and say it all the time on my channel uh, even though you might want to buy this to hold it forever right. you have to understand that the world works on fiat currencies like it or hate sure. it and i know it, by the sounds of everything yankee i can probably say which camp you're in but love it or hate it mm. money is what makes the world go around that famous phrase and you know having some money to pay your rent pay your mortgage buy your groceries Mm -hmm. is critical and for people to go all in often seems like a very bad idea from my well, mindset well first of all not that you're pigeonholing me i have uh, a variety of investment vehicles that are uh, making me uh, cash flow and other ways like, like private mortgage lending and so forth so don't don't yeah. look at this and think oh this is what yankee does he just invests in this stuff no this is wealth preservation something you said earlier very important to preserve our buying power against what I think is going to be stagflation and then in mm -hmm. uh, hyperinflation potentially so mm -hmm. don't don't get me wrong I invest but I just don't look at it this is a very good investment yeah I flip some stuff mm -hmm. but you're not gonna make massive amounts of money unless you are a, a big uh, coin dealer dealing with bulk and doing some massive uh, flipping uh, to to really uh, to 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 invest. I think to cash flow and to, to yield. So this again, yeah, I do have a prepper mindset. I, I think it's starting to sink in with a lot of people during what we've gone through. That oh my word, yeah, you kind of need to rely on yourself a little bit more, not just big state state nanny. Now I know. We're also different in that regard too. The United States has been very individualistic in the past, very, very you know, yes. pull yourself up by your own bootstraps type of thing. But I yes. prep with food, I prep with water, I prep with things yeah. that I think are important to because I don't want to be in a Katrina type situation, waving a flag and saying, "When is the government going to come and, and save me?" I think that's yeah. a bad yeah. mentality. And in fact, even the government says to prep to some degree they have the yep. site ready.gov and they say you really should have a few months of this or that so that's the approach that i take and that is sort of how the lens that i look at precious metals it's a means to an end it's yes. trying to you know uh, protect us from the ravages of inflation and what our governments are doing around the world this is an unprecedented time byb yeah, this is certainly, huge certainly is uh we saw, I you know, wasn't investing in gold and silver at the time, but I remember back mm. in 2008 and nine, I, I lost a job because of the situation that we were in mm. as, a, as a world. And that all seems child's wow. play, I think, compared with where we are now. And, yeah. and like you say, I think this whole decade is going to be defined by the economic instability that's going to follow. And I think that's, a, 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 you know, it, outside of gold and silver, there's so many people who are saying, oh, stocks and shares are at their lowest right now. You should go and buy things like IAG or, uh, you know, the airlines and things like that because they're or buy at Hertz. A they're price, bankrupt. But, Talk about a deal. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> and you kind of feel like oh, Robin Hood app is there's, the place to be right now. But yeah, I think there, we're going to see a lot to be, of people There's burn. definitely money to be made. And, and there's, this, sure. you know, these depressions and 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 sort of highs it's that's why i call it bull and bear market because they go up they go down and there will be money to be made on both sides of that roller coaster mm -hmm. but if you think that you can go and buy some silver and make a you know load of money i think you need to reevaluate why you're doing it and that's we are in what we there. what we hear in the back couple in household think about 
sort of the value of gold and silver, bringing it back to that topic, that yes. arching topic of why we get it. Um, so we don't, I, and I don't mean to preach. It's, it's, it's always interesting, isn't it? Everybody needs to make up their own minds. Yes. But for us, it seems right as part of our bigger portfolio. And like you said, we've, we've also got other, um, you know, fingers in other pies. You know, we've got various different assets and investments that can yield over time. But gold and silver, by far and away, are the ones that I get to enjoy the most. And well, of course present, now, present company not excluded. You know, you know how to make money, <laughs> and you know how to make gold and silver, especially silver, and the beautiful artwork that you do, uh, mm. give you that kind of cash flow. So I, again, I, I applaud you for that. I love when I see people doing uh, what you're doing really well. I, I think it's fantastic. I. I'm just not it's, a poor. I can't do what very you do. Of you to say <laughs> that you know, I we, it's a lot of work, and you put a lot of work in, and I and I love as well seeing small. Uh, we try as best as we can wherever we can to always support the small business and buy mm. something from a small business instead of a giant conglomerate. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a really difficult one, isn't it? Though, like I, again, going back to. Mm you know, the silver, I'd love to keep hold of everything I make. Uh, but Mrs. Backyard Bullion always says, no, if you do that, you're not a business. You're just wasting our money. And I was like, well, wasting is a different, oh, difficult word to use. That's... Like, okay, you're, you're not you're not making money. You're, you're just <laughs> having money put there on one side. So you, you married yeah, up, a... man. You, she, uh, she's oh, I know, she's it's great. Just... <laughs> she keeps Tell you grounded, that. right? Uh, <laughs> Same yeah, on this I... end of the pond. <laughs> married up. You have oh, no man. truer words said. Um, <laughs> but to put it, you know, like, so this piece here, this giant ridiculous roll over the Man, black that hole. That is just cool. I want to. I want to keep it. I really do. I haven't kept hardly any of my stuff. How many of, of those did you make? Say again. How many of those did you make? It's only one. Oh. It's only one like this so far. Yeah, that that would be hard I, to part with. <laughs> I don't know if I can replicate it. Maybe I can. I don't know if it looked the same, but it, you know, uh, the point is, mm. I'm basically going to buy this off myself, and this is going to be part of the silver stack that we have oh, going okay. forward. Will it be sold one day? Probably yes. Uh, but for the time being, it's preserving some of the wealth that we've got, taking that mindset uh, of that cash out of the business asset into the personal asset, separated it from church and state, so to speak. And that, has, um, has that yeah. been assayed? Yes, right there, these marks here are right the there, assay yeah. marks. You have to do that over there, right? Uh, yes. So, well, th there are loopholes uh, and it's one of these things where a loophole is all down to interpretation, isn't it? So for 999 silver that can be deemed bullion and what is defined as bullion in the legislation is left completely to interpretation. So right. you can have whatever interpretation you want. Technically, no. However, I think from a consumer standpoint, it makes much more sense to have an assay mark on it because this means obviously that it's been tested and the Edinburgh office, who've been doing it for 550 years, know it's real silver and they can verify that. So wow. um, for, for other things, so for example, I've got... Uh, can here, I just, so on an American to... standpoint, let me just tell you right now, we don't have to assay, but to no. me, that is one of the hallmarks of a, and I use the word hallmark intentionally there, uh, it's one of the hallmarks of uh, government minted silver bullion. In God we trust. Liberty, yeah. a date, United States of America, one ounce fine silver, uh, one dollar. These, in my sense, in, in my perspective, sort of are intrinsic, intrinsic assaying for me. This is why yeah. I, as part of my three part stacking the Yankee way, put the priority on even spending a tiny bit of premium, tiny bit, I like call of circulated American Silver Eagles, but a little premium on this type of coinage because in a sense, it's self-assayed. It shows it's legit because of the yeah. mintage. That totally. I just want to give the US, my US perspective on that. And, and you know, generally coins are obviously much more easy to verify. They're all standardized, you know, you know the yep. dimensions, the weights they should be, sure. the look, the feel. The designer is easily comparable with other things so mm -hmm. okay. yeah i know exactly what you mean but yeah from from like the assay point of view here in the uk mm -hmm. so something like this heart uh, is 
would be definitely legally required to be assayed because it's it's more than just bullion. This is an art piece that has oh, a shape and a meaning, whereas okay. this is just just a giant lump of silver. So that's, that's the formed. loophole you were talking so about. So you could probably get away with this. But again, it's like, do you really want to have somebody from trading standards knock on your door and say, mm -hmm. excuse me, Mr. Backyard Bullion, but we've had a complaint to say that maybe you should have done some hallmarking. So we want to now do an investigation wow. and go through all of your books and all of, you know, all of this. Do you want yeah, that no. in your life? And no. I said to myself, no, I really don't. I really don't. So, you know, we, we embrace the whole marking, even on items uh, like, so I've got another thing here. I've got, I got a few goodies out to, to have in the background. Um, you know, just a big, big giant bar of silver. Uh, we haven't had this one assayed yet, but it will be uh, at some point in the near future, underneath mm. 2020 there. But, yeah. um, you know, it adds value. And as you say, it's verifiable that it is indeed 909 silver. So, yeah lots uh, lots to really kind of enjoy about the world of silver and assaying and, uh, and validity but it's uh, it's an important one because you don't want to have fakes in your stack you don't want to have mm -hmm. you know this reliance on this stuff and then find out one day that it's actually not what you thought it was so uh, i think uh, that's maybe a topic for another time yeah that's a how good you idea. how you well you know I, I have no doubt that there's going to be some people watching this going when's the next fireside chat yankee yeah. in backyard um, so maybe at some point when, we, when we've got some time, we can have a think about what we can talk about. But I do think that kind of thing would be interesting, how you kind of verify, look at mm. your silver and how you manage it. And I don't know. Yeah, when maybe. I bought these, I had to verify it. So that would definitely be uh, a good topic for next time. And speaking of which, I think we should probably wrap this session of uh, our little collaboration up. What do you think? I think so. That's that's fine. I just want to take an opportunity to say a big thank you to everybody watching mm. this far into our uh, fireside chat. I think that's what we're going to call it, isn't it? Let's do that. Let's call it the. I like. It. Oh man, we got to come up with a really good name. But the fireside chat with uh, backyard bullion and Yankee stacking. That sounds it's great. It's quite. It's fun, <laughs> and I think, as I said, it is just like us having a chat in a mm. pub next to the fire, musing about the world that we live in and the mm. change, uh, the changing and difficult difficult world that we live in as well and how things are evolving we haven't really even touched on how things have gone in the world in 2020 for us since we last spoke but um when i told mrs I... yankee i was going to do this with you today she was like oh how's he doing it well, actually did they have to you know go through the same type of social distancing and shutdowns that we went through over there in the uk and i was like yeah yeah i'm afraid so but that would have been an yeah. interesting conversation maybe we'll touch on that next time Indeed. Hopefully by the time we sit down next time, mm. we might even be at a point where we're not having to socially distance. Oh, I know. Oh, I hope you're right. So isn't it, I, from my point, I find it so mm. inhuman to be avoiding like the plague every single person you're out and about and getting all these funny <laughs> looks from people if you walk past somebody just a bit too close. Too close, think, too close. Personal space, oh. back off. It's like weird, isn't it? It's not normal. It's not natural to the human being to be this socially distanced um, how about just shaking hands it, it's oh, I like i had somebody walk up to me and i was like uh, uh yeah yeah you, <laughs> you kind of do an, an air elbow type thing isn't it even you an elbow is too close right oh it's I crazy know. Oh, yeah, the, the i think maybe next time though, next time we get together let's let's hope and pray that this is uh is behind us yes well in terms of the physical stuff true you know, true we've we've got a lot a long way to come i think you know we we will touch on this, I think, at another one as well, but um, the, the financial and economic implications for everything the world's gone through will be with us for a long time. And if we can kind of conclude this, I suppose, video topic by, by just reinforcing that whilst the cultural differences between the US and the UK are different, I think there's a lot that we can all learn from each other in this world of gold and silver. And the one thing that does unite us is that we hold it in high regard for value and whether that be monetary value, wealth preservation value, making some money on the side value, whatever it might be, I think we could all agree that it's good. And we also take it upon ourselves to encourage other uh, collectors and stackers and so forth in the community to keep on doing it. I tell people to stack on and prep on because it's very important. And I think we're making a difference, a small difference, but definitely you are with your viewership and what you do. You really help the community a lot. And I appreciate that a lot, my friend. You're so. welcome. And I, I also get quite a lot of good insights from your stuff. I often have you, Silver Dragons, and a myriad of others on <laughs> in the background when I'm working and pouring silver. Oh, wow. And 
uh, sometimes your uh, your your podcast or your video I, I listen to this podcast but your video will come on and I'll go oh, that's an interesting topic I like <laughs> that you. and it was it, yeah so oh, that made my yeah. day thanks <laughs> you're welcome I can imagine it playing in the background as you perform your magic with silver it's, that would be so cool all right well thank you again for uh, doing this interview this fireside chat and I look forward to the next time with backyard bullion thank you uh, actually why don't you say thanks to everyone and I'll uh, sign off on my end well, a big thank you to you, Yankee, for, for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know life is hectic for everybody right now, so it's good to sit down and do this, and we'll see everybody on the next one. Thank you all of you out there in the YouTube land for watching. If you've not already done so, a thumbs up on both mine and Yankee Stacking's video, because we both published this video at the same time. Yeah. It does help both of our channels with the YouTube algorithm and all of that jazz. <laughs> and leave a comment as well, and let us know what you think about our fireside chat mm -hmm. and your insights on the cultural differences between the US and the UK. Or if you're in another country, let us know your thoughts from where you are. Otherwise, I think that's basically us done. So right. big yes. thank you to everybody and we'll see you on the next one. Yes, thank you. And to all my viewers, thank you so much. And I hope your day is a-okay.